Hello friends, this video on alternating currents part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 7 before going ahead with part 8. So let us now talk about inductive circuit. So we will talk about such an AC circuit where the only circuit element that will be present is an inductor. So you will not have resistor anymore. You will, if the resistor will get replaced with an inductor and we will study the same things for an inductor. That is uh, how much is the current that will flow through the circuit if we apply an alternating voltage to it. What is the voltage current relationship? How do we represent the voltage current relationship graphically as well as uh, with a phasor diagram? And what is the power associated with an inductor? So these are the few things which we talked about uh, during discussing resistive circuits. So we will now talk about all the same things in inductive AC circuit. So first let us start with what happens when an AC voltage is applied to an inductor. So in this case what is my source voltage that is what is the voltage which we have applied that voltage is nothing but your normal alternating voltage which is represented as V is equal to Vm sin omega t. So we will see that when we apply a voltage V what would be the current that will get generated in this inductive circuit. So here also we will apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. So again according to Kirchhoff's loop rule the sum of all the EMFs the net EMF of the circuit should be equal to the sum of the product of the current and the re respective resistances. So in this circuit do you see any resistance? There is no resistors at all right. So no resistors in the circuit. So since there are no resistors, there is one EMF that is this voltage source that is one EMF and the other EMF is the induced EMF in this coil. Let us suppose this inductor is of inductance L. So we have this inductor which is of inductance L. What will happen as soon as current flows through the circuit or when if since it is an alternating current so the current will keep changing. So when the current changes the flux or the magnetic flux associated with the current also changes and you remember electromagnetic induction right we talked about Faraday lens law what did that say that say that whenever there is a change in flux a current is induced or an EMF is induced in the inductor so therefore there will be a self induced EMF on this inductor which will try to oppose the change which caused it right you remember all those concepts or you remember all those laws of uh, lens and Faraday right so there will be one EMF that one is the source EMF that is the source voltage and there will be another self induced EMF. So that means there are two EMFs in the circuit one is the source voltage and the other one is the self induced EMF let me call the self induced EMF as E. So this will be equal to since there are no resistors so this will be equal to zero. So what is this E? This E is the self induced EMF in the inductor that is L right so we can write it as V and what is self induced EMF in our previous lesson we studied that self induced EMF is equal to minus L D I by D T so we can write the same thing here that is L D I by D T is equal to 0 so now we can replace V with V M sine omega T right so this minus L di by dt is equal to 0. So now this can be written as Vm sine omega t is equal to L di by dt. So we can write it as Vm sine omega t dt divided by L is equal to di because our aim here is to calculate or to evaluate or to determine the value of current which will be flowing through the circuit that means we have to determine the value of i so this we can now we can integrate it on both sides because on integrating we will get the value of i so this we will integrate from some value 0 to i so we can write it as 
i is equal to vm divided by l integration of sin omega t dt so this can be written as vm divided by l minus cos omega t divided by omega right this plus some constant because during integration you get an integration constant so therefore we can write as i is equal to minus vm divided by omega l into cos omega t plus some constant now what would be the value of this integration constant now since we know that the source emf or the source voltage oscillates symmetrically about zero how do we know that because we know that our source voltage is v which is equal to vm sin omega t so this source voltage oscillates between plus vm and minus vm right this value oscillates between these two maximum and minimum values now since it oscillates symmetrically about zero because both sides above zero for example if this is your this is how your source voltage looks like so this is your zero so it oscillates symmetrically about zero it goes to plus vm again it goes to minus vm it goes to plus vm minus vm so it is oscillating symmetrically about zero therefore the current should also oscillate about zero so current should also oscillate about zero and that is why we do not want any integration constant so this integration constant should also be zero because if we want that it is oscillating about zero that means there should be no integration constant here because if you have some term here that means it is not oscillating about zero instead it is oscillating about that value right so therefore we say that i is equal to minus vm divided by omega l into cos omega t so now what we do we replace vm by omega l with im right like how in that case in case of resistive circuit im was equal to vm by r so here it is vm by omega l so now this we can write it as i is equal to minus im cos omega t now how did i represent my uh, source voltage this is how i represented my source voltage that is in terms of sin omega t so we will represent current also in terms of sin function so that it becomes easier for us to find out the phase difference between them so let us write it as i am into minus cos omega t minus cos omega t can be written as sin of omega t minus pi by 2 because we know that sin 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta here we have minus cos theta so we have made it as sin theta minus pi by 2 right so this is the current which will flow through an inductive circuit so this was my input not input in the sense that this was the voltage which was applied to the circuit and this was the current which will flow through the circuit so what do we see from here we see that this time current and voltage are not in phase they would have been phase if both had sin omega t but here we see that for the expression of current it has sin omega t minus pi by 2 that means they are out of phase by pi by 2 right so we will talk about that in detail when we uh, represent the phase relationship between voltage and current graphically as well as with the help of phasor diagrams that time we will talk about it in detail so for now we will see that we will now focus on uh, the current amplitude because here the current amplitude was little different i mean in case of resistors we took it as im is equal to vm by r so here it is vm by omega l so we will now focus on this current amplitude so while when we study about current amplitude we will see that there is a new term which has come into picture so let us look at the current amplitude which we found here so we saw that the current amplitude that is im 
is equal to Vm divided by omega L. Now if you compare this with I is equal to V by R for any resistive circuit, what do you see? That current is always equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So here in this case, in this circuit where, we, where you don't have any resistance but you have an inductor, there also you have current is equal to voltage divided by something analogous to resistance that means in an inductive circuit this omega l acts as resistance right so the resistance of an inductive circuit is known as inductive reactance so it was told that we will call this term as inductive reactance so what is inductive reactance Inductive reactance is the resistance associated with a pure inductive circuit. Why pure inductive circuit? Because if, it, if the circuit will have any other circuit element except inductor, in that case the resistance of that element will also come into picture. For example, if you have a resistor as well as an inductor in a circuit, you, there will be two resistances involved. One is the normal resistance R of the resistor and the other one is the inductive resistance of the inductor, right? So, we are talking about inductive reactance which is the resistance associated with a pure inductive AC circuit. That means the resistance associated with an inductor is your inductive resistance and we denote it by XL, X with, an subs with a subscript L. The subscript L represents inductor. The SI unit will be ohm. SI unit and dimensions, everything remain the same as that of resistance because this acts, this also acts as a resistance. So its function is also similar to resistance. It limits the current flowing through an inductive circuit, like how your resistance limits the current flowing through a resistive circuit. Right? So in this case, we say that the inductive reactance XL is equal to omega L. That means the inductive reactance is directly proportional to omega. It is directly proportional to L. That means greater the value of the inductance of an inductor, greater is the inductive reactance. Similarly, greater is the frequency or the angular frequency, greater is the inductive reactance. So this, this was something new which was introduced in case of an inductive circuit. Right? Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.